pitch one to create a surge token. Now I can continue with my turn. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Cool. How should we start? First of all... I'm recording that. I'm recording. I've been recording the whole time, so we can just roll into it, and I'll just sort of deem yeah, it. Yeah, that's that's the, that's what I expected. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. I would put something else. Yeah. So, okay. Um, Flesh and blood is a game. It <laughs> <laughs> Flesh and blood <laughs> is indeed a game. A card game. In that card game, there is a so-called hero that's named Bravo. So-called hero. Oh, Bravo! Yeah. Man. He looks good. What does he do? What does Bravo do? He dominates <laughs> the battlefield. <laughs> no, uh, he has the ability to dominate. So I know we've talked about Bravo quite a, quite a lot in the previous episodes of Bravo Bros. So yeah. now, <laughs> Pro Tour Baltimore is uh, approaching faster and faster. Mm -hmm. Next week, this time, I'll already be at the player reception in Baltimore. Ah, so when you're viewing this, dear viewer, the uh, the Pascal man himself will be in Baltimore with what we're going to be talking about today, which is obviously the Bravo deck and uh, yeah. and what you can come to expect and how you prepare for the event as well. So, uh, so yeah, this time next week you'll be there. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully it will work out. I have to say I'm a little bit rusty on the drafts of the Outsider set. It's oh, gotcha. not that easy to drop. It's not that easy to drop, but it's a lot of fun. So. If it goes bad, at least I'm having fun and can play with two cards. But yeah. um, the thing I'm prepared the most is the CC card, and I'll really try to be good there. I mean, the last few. <laughs> That's all we all hope for, bad. isn't it? To be good there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the last few tournaments that were a little bit bigger weren't that bad. I had. Um, I had a very rough call in the first two uh, ProQuest uh, events, yeah. and yeah, I doctor said I was cleared from it, but I was still feeling pretty, pretty bad. So I was the like, okay, I'll, the after effects. I would, I would just go for the community matter, but I played so badly, I lost to a bolt in player oh wow on round on round three yeah nothing wrong with ball nothing wrong with <laughs> yeah i mean it, it, if the bravo player just blocks a, uh, a charged attack with an attack action card it's his fault <laughs> that's what i did and i dropped from the from the tournament <laughs> and just <laughs> and went hiking okay <laughs> nice I yeah. think, that's a, I think um, that's a good place to start as well. Like, how do you prepare for one of these things? Because obviously, I don't know about you, Tom, but with regards to events and playing events, I just roll into it. You know, after bit after drinking and eating loads the night before, I don't really prepare for it <laughs> or anything. You know, so it's uh, is that is that the same with you, Pascal? As like a obviously a previous Swiss national champion and obviously someone that actually gets PTIs to go to these big events. What? How do you? prepare physically and mentally i think it depends um for Pro <laughs> Lille, for example i uh i was uh, i mean everybody can look it up on youtube what i that, did that's to, right. for preparation <laughs> and i thought oh let's just use earth lord bounty instead of tectonic plating and do a really wacky build of bravo nobody will expect that well nobody expected it but i was um, playing against bravo and Oh wonder, tectonic plating is the better equipment than <laughs> Earth or Bounty yeah. in a regular Bravo build. So yeah, uh, I got Bravoed three times in a row. Oh no. Um, for national championship, for the first one, it was um, I was training a lot, playing games into very different heroes. But I was I was training as old him that time. And like the night before, I was like, nah, I can't concentrate so long, I won't play old him, I'll just play Bravo. <laughs> so it was a last minute decision to just roll in with Bravo. And for the World Championship, I was not preparing at all. I just went there. Just for the fun. And yeah, and, and it was fun. It was It went well for the CC part, but I never played 
my blitz deck once. That wasn't a good idea because I had no idea what to do. I just lost most of the times. And you played Icelander on Blitz Detection, didn't I you? I played Icelander, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with not even practicing, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, I should have just run with Bravo. Just strapped away some cards and run with Bravo. Yeah. I think it would have worked better. He he wouldn't have made me able to go tops with it, but at least I would have got one or two wins out of day two. Mm. Which would have helped me, if I would have had one or two wins more, I would have had a cash out of $1,000, so... Mm -hmm. Okay. Would have been nice, yeah. and it's quite close then, really. Yeah, I, yeah. I just just one more win, and I would have cashed out. No, oh. but hey, and that's why I thought, okay, this time I won't just don't not won't do nothing. I, I'll I'll practice. I'll yeah. practice the Bravo into all the matchups I could at their local meta. I'm not using Talishar because I I don't like it. I don't like it at all. No. Um, I mean, I think it's great that it exists, and so people that don't have a community yet can uh, actually play the game. Yeah. Um, but if you have a community, I think very quickly you will just get annoyed with it. Mm. Or, or people oh. like me who can't be bothered to make commoner decks, so I'll just <laughs> tell the sharks I can just net deck, get them from just net them on Fabry or whatever. Yeah. Well, I could just build them on Fabry I mean, and just import them over. I mean, I can I I, I kind of get why people don't want to play common. <laughs> hey hey hey! It's a it's a blitz format. It's a blitz format. I don't like blitz. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Common with commoners. Come in, come in with commoners CC and down, but not but not not blitz. <laughs> I should give that a go. Maybe yeah. See see how it turns out. Commoners CC. That'd be interesting. Commoners CC. Yeah. I mean, we can try it out. Yeah. But uh, there's one bonus rule. You're only allowed to play Bravo. Bravo, Commoner CC, no. Bravo Bowl, yeah. <laughs> Bravo Brawl. <laughs> <Yeah>. Bravo Brawl. <laughs> Bravo Bowl. And yeah, this time I also started working out in January. Yeah. On the regular base. Uh, since the the meta wasn't established since outside wasn't even released, so I couldn't train with the new meta anyway. So yeah, I know Bravo into the matchups that are already out. And I just do workouts in the morning, uh, one to one and a half hour uh, for two months. And this month I had so much to do at work, so I toned it down a little. So it's four to five times one and a half hour uh, mm. per week. So just to do something. And um, I also played a lot of One Piece. <laughs> the time uh, outside it wasn't released since it's, uh, I think it's, it's a, uh, a light-minded game. It's not. It's not that competitive as Flesh and Blood, since your actions don't have that big of an impact. You have you have your, your few lines that your deck can do, and if you draw them in this in the right order, you you're gonna win. If you draw them in the wrong order, it's gonna be a hard time. Mm. So the influence you have into the onto the outcome of the game is not that big. So yeah, I wanted to play some card games, but I didn't want to overload my brain with uh, just the same again and again and also our local armories were mostly draw my like 50 percent you need to tell these my... people start playing something different mate because every time <laughs> it's like oh draw my draw my it's like god damn like come on people <laughs> i mean it's fine i always win against draw my but it's going it's getting boring <laughs> yeah so what do you do so what do you do in that situation and if you're if you're um if your your meta is like playing one hero and one hero only, how do you practice against other matchups? Do you have like a testing group? You know, because there's a lot of people out there that have these groups that get together and play highly competitive games in preparation for these things. It's, it's an alien world to me, but is that something that you do as well? Or um, to some extent, um, a friend of mine also has a day off on Monday, so we both have Monday off. So we'll just play for some hours uh, into various matchups. Okay, that's pretty good. How how do you find that? Does that how much does that help? It helps quite a lot. So I it, it helps to establish okay which heroes are going to be problematic for me and which heroes aren't. Since okay, since um, he isn't going to be the best at every deck, and I'm no. also not going to be the best at every deck. But if you have like this common level that isn't too low, since we 
we are both competitive players. Um, I established, okay, um, my nemesis is Kodachi. <laughs> and, and I was, was uh, going to ask who are, who are you who are you finding you're not having the best matchups against? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, we can roll up some uh, an overview of uh, of heroes after that. Mm. Uh, I'll just <laughs> quickly search out one of those. Uh, uh, TCG. Also, I want to say. If as doesn't cut in a quick skit of LMFAO's uh, sexy and I know it when you said you work out, I'm gonna be extremely disappointed. Bow, 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 bow. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so it's just, one, one okay. good side effect. One good side effect of uh, of working out to um, to get in this uh, in this mindset of okay, I need to pull through. Uh, you also lose weight. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I noticed. Wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something. It's something that um, that a lot of people say helps. Is you know, if your body's there, your mind's also there as well, and vice versa. Um, yeah, that's that's what what uh, the tall team actually told me to do. Um, it was yeah. his idea, and I was like, well, you know what? I'll just try that. Uh, I also <laughs> stopped drinking uh, soft drinks completely but that's mm. something i wanted to do for a long time that doesn't have anything to do with the pro tour yeah but i have to say it works out quite good i um last weekend i had one uh, glass of coca-cola and it gave me diarrhea oh uh, no so yeah mm. what did you eat with the coca-cola nothing <laughs> nothing <laughs> okay. i was just having a normal not even zero just a normal regular coke and but it was a refreshing coat, though. <laughs> yeah, up until the diarrhea kicked in. Oh, God. Yeah. And I was like, okay, now even the, the urge to drink soft drinks is not as bad mm -hmm. as before. Because other, before that, mm -hmm. I always wanted to, to go back to drink soft drinks because I really like them. But now it's like, nah, I don't really want to sit on the toilet for two hours. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I, I have that, I have that issue as well. Soft drinks is like one of the things that's my vice. But um, I think I think it's a sign from the heavens that um, Flesh and Blood LSS sent me one of those water bottles, those you know the Flesh and Blood <laughs> water bottles, because now I feel obliged to just drink water and not put anything else in it. So that's my that's my aim to to to, to, to sort of cut out soft drinks altogether. Um, so uh, yeah, because yeah, they're, they're not good for you, are they? I still need to upgrade to one of the flesh and blood ones because I don't have one. Did you not? Did, nice. we, did you not go hmm? to? Did you not go to New Jersey then? Because they all got. You no. All got... No. I, I could. I, I had to work then, and I didn't get. The, ah. I didn't want to use my PTI for a pro tour if I can go to Worlds. Ah, I so see. I missed, right. I missed out on the on the first pro tour. Went to the second. Went to Worlds, and will go to the third, which is also pretty okay. I think. Right. I reckon, I reckon they probably will start mass producing these though. Like I with, hope so. Like with their socks and stuff that they done for the uh, Christmas gift things to creators and stuff. I think they will start mass producing this stuff anyway. Because because loads of people want it. It's the same with the dice, the big massive chunky dice. A lot of people want I mean, them. So I why not? Those, I can those from. Uh... Yeah, they're nice TCG as well. Ted. TCG Ted. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen he did a load of load of load of cool ones. Um not sure whether he does them anymore, but Yeah, I mean um, as soon as as, as, mm. as soon as LSS wants to sell their tokens, I th uh, I think he will stop producing them because he was just producing them for having an an opportunity to have it as a token since LSS doesn't produce it. And yeah. he asked LSS if it's okay to produce it and sell it to people who want to buy it. And then mm. the was, yeah, just go ahead. Um, yeah. But if we want to sell it one time, you need to stop. And he was like, yeah, fine. If I recall that correctly. Yeah, because he was using okay. the same logos as the Flesh and Blood logos, essentially, for the defense yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Mm. That's fair enough. So if we buy, buy the same tokens, tokens I use, they're really good. Mm, yeah, I've heard about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really good tokens and pretty reasonably priced. If, if, well, unless you're me and you're stupid and you buy way too many. 
Because <laughs> um, you don't really need that many. I went overboard and bought a lot too many. So yeah. I've been giving them away to players, new players. It's been quite nice. I mean, anyway, until so, until uh, until Bravo Bros get sponsored, we'll we'll cut out the the brand talk, shall we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Send us free stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Hashtag okay. Beats by Dre. <laughs> No, I don't want those. <laughs> I've already got some. I just wear them. don't wear them because they're obscenely expensive. <laughs> uh, I, I don't. I mean, I tried it like ten years ago, and then I didn't like them because the quality was not that great. But they could have improved. I have no idea. <laughs> um, yeah, matchups that I don't like. Uh, with outsiders, uh, Uzuri and Riptide came along. Both of those don't seem to be really an issue. For me, who's yeah. really slightly more, but her, her damage and her own hits aren't as bad as the own hits Bravo can provide. No. Yeah. I haven't really tested it too much against her, but the testing I did was like, okay, I'm, my crosses will just go through and deal damage, and she will, sooner or later, she will just die. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dynasty Arachne. Uh, Arachne is actually not a great matchup. If the Arachne player knows what, what he's doing, the matchup is going to be very hard, since they can uh, also play a Bravo deck, basically, with defense reactions yeah. and very defensively. Um, luckily, Anathos deals more damage than Spider Spite and all the other uh, daggers, so I can just um, shock Anathos in his face until he dies. And that's mostly how I roll with it, roll it, because otherwise, if I tr dominate Crush, he will block it out anyway. And if I just use Anathos to get through his uh, defense reactions and then crush him, it's uh, easier to do. But I, I'm not expecting to see anyone using Arachne at the Pro Tour, to be honest. Dromai is uh, one of my best mm. matchup, if you ask me. Um, there are a few Dromai players I really um, think could have beaten the deck, but mostly I didn't even, I wasn't even afraid that the deck was able to win against my strategy. So I'm feeling pretty confident with Romai. Pi is, uh, it depends. <laughs> if he uses Kodachi, I have a problem. If he uses Ember Blade, it's going to be fine. There isn't, there are, I haven't seen a lot of Pi though recently, have you? Like, you know, there's no, no. talk, there's no talk of him or anything. At all, nah. he's like dropped off a bit, hasn't he? Because yeah. of. Uh, I mean, Katsu is yeah. straight up the better, the better ninja. If you if you are able to play him right, I think he's he's, he's slightly more difficult to play than Fi. But if you know how, what you're doing, he's going to be way more effective than Fi. Yeah. 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 Ka Katsu's not really a Katsu's not really a deck you can just pick up and play, is it? Really? Yeah. Um, so I was, play I was playing against I was playing against um, Spike Feeder's Bill the other day, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I'm just going to play Katsu." Picked up, uh, I think it was TCG uh, TCG Talks list, and he was just like, "What do I do? How do I find it? What's in my deck?" He had to get his bloody <laughs> Fabrary <laughs> list up to find out what was in his deck. <laughs> and yeah, of course, I absolutely steamrolled him because he didn't know what he was doing. But yeah, the good thing is Katsu. We go, we go, we go to Katsu later. Uh, next up yeah, is yeah. Icelander. Icelander is one of my bad matchups. It's like uh, really, yeah, thirty to forty percent win rate, I'd say. Oh, cool. Um, she can make so much uh, disruption with um, frost bites and this uh, hand discarding that uh, it will be difficult to pull through crushes if the Icelander player knows what they're doing. If they don't know what they're doing, you're just winning. Do you not just swing an Othos and just block everything else? No. Aren't I mean, you, you can. That, that, that's the best strategy you can do, since you, you're using as, uh, as little resources as you need to switch to yeah. do damage. But uh, they still have this OTK. If you do that, they have the OTK turn. They can still pull off, even with the banned amulets. And if you don't do that, they can. It's it's like a gentleman's exchange of of punches. Since they have a, a text that costs three and a text for seven or eight, and you have the same. Yeah. So you expect you're just, you're just you expecting hmm? the ball lander lists to be at worlds then uh, at uh, Baltimore then, or is it going to be more the arcane thing? 
I think it's going to be more the arcane thing, and then the strategy of just trying to go through with whole lot of damage is, in my opinion, the better thing. Mm. No, never dominates since they can react to the, domi to, to, to the dominate trigger. Yeah, just true. swing your attack. Yeah. And if you have a backup pummel, that's even better. I think Icelander is going to be hard. I don't think that Icelander is going to be too much too much prevalent after the last few mm. tournaments since yeah, she be, lost. There'll be a lot of yeah. there'll, there'll be a lot of Azalea, and Azalea is good into Icelander. So yeah. that will and cancel also, out. Old him is better into Azalea and also not yeah. bad into Icelander. So I'm expecting the Ice players going for old him, which is the better matchup for me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Azalea is going to be there, I guess. <laughs> She's going to be there. She's going to be there. <laughs> She's going to be there. That's fine. But we uh, had an episode last point. week about how to crush her, so it shouldn't be an issue, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I think my main strategy is to play. Just yeah. to play, yeah, just to show up. <laughs> just play, play the game. <laughs> just to play the game. Sit down across from your opponent, don't be late for the round, and you will yeah. be fine. Play Flesh and Blood, <laughs> and you'll be all right. <laughs> um, Bravo Mirror is going to be hopefully a 50 50. <laughs> um, Briar, I think I'm favored into Briar since I can, with, with, the, with the current build of Bravo with Chokeslam and everything, yeah. also Briar is going to be hurt a lot. Mm. Uh, yeah. Shane is easy, you just block him out. Oh, wait, Shane is banned. Yeah. Oh, saying. yeah, of course. Yeah, he's bound. Yeah. That is, that is a, it's a very good matchup because if your opponent reveals that hero, you automatically win. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I never lost to Chain. It's mm. too easy. I think he's against Guardian. He's, he's just. Yeah. I just block him and then he dies. Yeah, yeah. that's it. He, Kills he himself. The part of, he even takes the part of dealing the damage. I don't even need to attack him. He just dies. Kills himself, yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's just going to be a hard fire, Not so much chain, but... <laughs> yeah. Well, against against Guardian, he still runs Carrion Husk, and that is in one I damage. Suppose, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's quite yeah. enough to kill him. <laughs> yeah, just hold off. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dash... It's going to be a tough matchup if they play the the hybrid build. If they just go for the Instance. for the boost build, okay, I, I just wear them out. Yeah, just wear them out. Yeah, uh, Dorinthia, in my opinion, is also very favorite to Bravo because I can just hold a Stormtron Arsenal and react on top of all her reactions, and then yeah. take no damage and swing back with the crippling or <laughs> Spinal in that matter uh, on that turn. Um, Kano. I think it's uh, if he does Kano, he does Kano. If he doesn't, he doesn't. What? What? Um, how much arcane barrier are you packing? Three. Three, just three. Yeah, there's not not not, not much space for more arcane barrier than three. Since you're you're not able to pitch two cards away a turn for, to mm. go for four or anything, so one blue a turn is all you can give. And um, I'm also running uh, Oasis Respite or Steadfast. I'm still thinking between those two yeah. um, to get, a, get around the, the, the big turns. So that's probably something. a bit of a thingy, that isn't it? It's probably a bit of a dice roll, really, because it, which version is Steadfast? Blue or red? Red. So you get two extra damage blocked from the yeah. red, but. You it potentially costs. can get a life gain, and it costs three. But with the respite, you've got a potential life gain if you are well, losing life. The strategy here is, if they have their Imperial thingy scrolly out there, and they name Oasis Respite when they go off, I'm not able to play Oasis Respite in order to prevent damage. So yeah. if they do that, I can just use Strict Steadfast instead and take no damage. Do you, reckon they, yeah. do, you, do you reckon that's what they'll expect as well? They'll that they'll play the ledger and then think, yeah, that they're, they're gonna pack Oasis. That's the that's, that's, exactly. that's, that's, that's what yeah. they'll come to first. Yeah. The thing is, the thing is, I only use Oasis in certain matchups where I can also use that fast, uh, namely Guardian Mirrors, Kanu and Azalea. 
So in all those mirror in all those games, also steadfast would be pretty good. But yeah. it costs three, which is not as cost efficient as Oasis. No. Against Azalea, if I have a bad hand, I can just say, okay, I pitch a red, I want for my late game anyway. To prevent four damage, I can't block since it's dominated. I still have two cards for hammer swing for six. Um Yeah, if I do that with a I need to lose one of my blues. If I have if I have a red heavy hand, I might not be able to swing back after that. Yeah. That's why why I'm I would love to just stick with Oasis Respite, but a Kano player can just abuse that. Then again, how many Kano players are in the current meta? I have no idea. That's it. That's what I was thinking. How how much Kano are you really expecting? Mm. And if it's just like 10% and I'm getting paired against one and lose because of I used Oasis Resp, that's fair game. It's still the right meta call to do. So, mm. yeah, I, I, th I, th I think in the current meta it's better to use Oasis Resp, but I'm still not sure I still... Uh, I'll pack both for Baltimore, of course. Uh, then next up is Katsu. I think it's my worst matchup, to be honest, out of all. Okay. Because I hate Kodachis. Kodachi. Yeah. Kodachi. Kodachis are like uh, Luminaris, but on a weapon. <laughs> yeah. How much Katsu are you expecting, though? I'm use I'm expecting quite a lot of, of Katsu. Uh, I, I mean... Really? I mean, not a lot, a lot, but uh, I think at least as much as Bravos. Okay. Since with his boost and everything he got from the from the new set, I think he's a very very good aggressive hero that can also go mm. into a defensive role. He was a very combo. good uh, combo uh, combo hero that can play offensively and defensively and in, uh, in the, with quick flex and so in in the meta before mm. uh, Tales of Aria, before Briar just went nuts. Yeah. Uh, before that, he was a, he was a viable hero. Even in the in the monarch monarch uh, era, he was still viable because he's just very efficient hero. And now you can also you can recycle your cards. You can you have um, prevention from deck out with uh, Mukenshi release and Lord of the of the Winds, and you can deactivate uh, the hero ability of the opponent with the Dishonor route. So you have you have yeah. you have these two very strong combo lines. You have you have uh, searcher effects. You can use uh, even bigger than that for more card draw, more card efficiency. You have so many tools to go around. I think, yeah, pretty nice. Uh, by the way, Dromai has also <laughs> a very good little build. <laughs> you can That's a good uh, job. The... That's not around anymore, eh? Well, the, her her belittle build is way more efficient than <laughs> than belittle. Since there is this one draconic card, and if you attack with it, you can search a phoenix flame out of your deck and put it into your hand. Oh yeah, um, you can flame use call awakening. Flame call awakening. You can you can play something red. Flame call awakening. Take out your phoenix flame. Pitch your phoenix flame into fur, flame scale furnace and get two resources out of it. <laughs> For that, you can still uh, one and conquer or anything else. Those are the draw my decks uh, that can potentially win against Bravo if they do that. Otherwise, I, I, I see no chance how they how they will pull it off on a regular base. I mean, they have a ten to twenty percent win rate, yes, but that's not a lot. Yeah, it's funny. Um, it's funny, it's funny that you say that because um, before we go into the other heroes, well, obviously we'll cover cover all of them to a certain degree. Uh, there was a battle hardened in Richmond that happened recently, and there was a Bravo okay. that yeah. there was a Bravo that made the top eight of that, um, and he actually lost against a, against a Dromai. Um, okay. So I, I don't I haven't watched the video. I don't know what kind of Dromai that was, but it's just interesting that you say that. And then recently there was a Bravo that lost. It said. Uh, uh, so it's Lucas Balligan's Bravo put on a show-stopping performance against Jody Burney's Brom uh, Dromai, but the Mighty Dragons of Volcor prevailed, according to this uh, Flesh and Blood article. Um, so yeah, it would have been interesting to see what that video is, or what sort of Dromai it is. But you're saying I the mean, ag the aggressive Dromais are hard to play against, then, or yeah, harder. It's yeah. still in my favor, mm. I suppose. Mm. But I think the the biggest mistake Bravos will do is if a, if a mirror guy or a passing is out, you attack. From I and that's a death sentence for Bravo. Yeah. If there if there is something out that can prevent phantasm from happening, 
it needs to go. Yeah. And ride the next one. Even if you have a dominated tripping crush on, on, on this play. Just Anathos it away. Get it away. Just Anathos it away. Just Anathos yeah. it away. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's such such a value gain if they can attack with a Vincicry with, with or with a with a Chromai without Phantasm and have the full um effect of the of the hero uh, yeah. of, of the dragon. Yeah. Either you block either you block a uh, six in order to not take the arcane damage, or they gain one additional action point which you need to pop an additional time this turn in order to not get over steamrolled. And yeah. I think that's the, that. If I see a Bravo losing to Dromai, that's what they do. Uh, yeah. They leave out one of those, and then the Dromai turns happen. Because Dromai needs to pitch deck against Bravo in a perfect manner to go into two of those Phantasm uh, disablers into three Dromais, yeah. and then they attack with all the Ash Wings. And I think, I think, yeah, that's good. But if I can destroy both of those um, Phantasm disablers the turn before, that's why I always put a yeah. go again uh, attack in my arsenal and nothing else yeah. against Promai, since I need to be able to to deal with those uh, those go again and any disablers yeah. uh, right on the spot. If they mirror guy and um, and uh, and that's not mirage, uh, passing mirage, yeah, passing mirage. And if they do yeah. mirror guy into passing, I need to destroy both in the next turn. If I can't do that, that's a window they can deal a lot of damage and uh, potentially win. And that's why you got so Zealous I... Beltings and E-Strikes and stuff in for that matchup, yeah. Exactly, um, that's why I need those Zealous Belting and E-Strikes. Yeah. The thing is, I'm running I'm running uh, three of each at the moment because of my local meta, because we're just playing Dromai. And if I cut one or two of those, my win rate is still above 80%, I think, in, in my local meta. Well, so that's good though, yeah. taking means... less. Are you mm -hmm. taking less? Are you taking less of the go against stuff? Or are you just keeping it as it is? I'm not sure. I'll um, I'll bring some cards that I think can also be good. The one we talked about uh, on Outsiders release. I'll bring two. Um... Oh damn! <clears throat> I forgot the name. Amnesia. Um, I was doing a show. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I never know with you. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> to, to amnesias uh, with me uh, to potentially take to, to go again cards out to put two amnesias in, um, but I'm not sure if I if I'll do that because they can steamroll and if you're not prepared for Bromide, I will just overwhelm you. But then again, how many Bromides will I face? Possibly one to two. Mm. Um, it should still be possible with that. Yeah. Uh, next up is Levia. Uh, next up is Lexi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not expecting to verse and Le a Levia out there. No. Otherwise, not. otherwise the strategy is the same as against the Rhinor, which is just yeah, I deal more damage than you since my attacks are Guardian and not Brute, which yeah. is uh, still ridiculous to me. I have on hits and higher damage numbers, so yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's still a pretty 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 even matchup. I mean, even against I mean not as much as against against Levi as against Reinar, but I think Reinar is a pretty fifty fifty matchup. Mm. If, if doesn't they, Levi Reinar, have like the, the bigger doesn't the bigger attacks from Levi worry you? Like you start getting things like um, endless more like coming at you for like three for nine. I mean, I can just, I block the three cards and take zero damage. That's fine. I just come mm. back with hammer. If Reinar attacks with a nine attack, I have no cards in hand and I take nine damage. Yeah, it's nice. And also, if she do, does uh, those turns, she most likely dies to blood death anyway. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, she is a strong hero with the cards she has, but her hero ability is so bad. It, just it loses is awful. Game. It, it loses her so many games. Uh, we have a local Levia player, and I versed him quite a lot. And my win percentage against him is pretty is, is close to one hundred percent. And I never dealt a finishing blow. He always kills up himself. Wow. Because yeah. he was like, either I die through your attack and not block, or I block and die through blood, through blood, blood death. Yeah. 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 Levi doesn't yeah. lose. That's the thing. She doesn't. She doesn't. She never gets beaten. You can't yeah, beat Levi. 
Levi just leaves the game. Yeah. Uh, next up would be Lexi, which is, I think, with the new cards, uh, a bigger threat than before. But it's still a ranger, so if I prevail with efficient blocking and swinging back in certain situations, it still is a doable matchup. I just mustn't put any big crush into my arsenal, since I won't get it out. No crippling crush, nothing. Nothing like that. That's mm. the way I lost to Lexi on uh, ProQuest Season 1, when I put the crippling crush on turn 1 into my arsenal, and it lost me the game. Why, uh, why, is no. that why does that lose your game against Lexi, though? Because she not, she's not dominating, is she? She's more like... Multiple yeah, hits. but the thing is, either I take a very many, very much damage and frostbite, uh. or I block. So I block, but I can't put any defense reaction into my arsenal if there's a crippling yeah. crush in the arsenal. And back in uh, Pro Quest Season One, there was not no Crown of Providence, so I couldn't reverse that mistake. Oh right, yeah. Makes but sense. if I don't put a big crush into the arsenal, I have the Crown of Providence to switch out a card in hand and possibly just swing a, with a crippling crush out of my hand. Yeah. Which is mm. uh, gives me quite more advantage. Mm. But she has good on hits, so she can win uh, more so than Azalea, in my opinion, because she goes more wide. And I think yeah. wider decks are always the bigger issue for Bravo than tall, go tall decks. Yeah. Uh, Ultim, well, I need to beat him before his second cycle, otherwise it's going to be very hard when he pitch stacked everything. Um, but I have big dominated attacks that fly his way, so I have the possibility to to outrun him even though he blocks very efficiently. If he has a, 40, a damage that comes in for 14 with dominate, he will probably just block 5 or 6 and take the rest since it's dominated. So is that the plan then? Is it against against Oldim is to just dominate, use Bravo's ability to try and force as much leak damage as possible? Or... Yeah. yeah, and if I, I gotta say, if it's the full block version that doesn't do anything except for blocking, it's going to be hard because they can block quite a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. If it's a mid range Stompy build, it works out pretty okay. Um, I would say I'm also in a 50 50 matchup against Oldim. Do they... I reckon it's probably going to be. I reckon it'll be full block as well, right? In this next Pro Tour, mm -hmm. it will be full defense mode because of like the azaleas and stuff as well. You know, if they. Well, can... I think... well it depends. I think uh, full defense mode is um, just going to have a rough time against. I think it's Romai. not. Too... I get I get strong. they will lose straight up. Lose. Mm. They if they cannot go. If they don't have enough popper in the deck, they will just lose. And if they have enough popper in the deck, I can dominate through. <laughs> That's the thing. <laughs> so, yeah, I can, it can be tough to play against uh, an old team that just blocks everything. But I also think that they won't have the best cards against uh, um, an Azalea, since Azalea can just go for dominate A team. And then there's you will still leak damage and have on hits, blood red pox tokens and so on. Yeah. And if they if they take out the cards from the hand before Zaya can shoot, they can uh, prevent more damage if it's a dominated arrow since there are less pump spells in the hand. But uh, I gotta say, um, it de it depends on the build of the of the full defense list, and it also depends on how efficiently they draw the D reacts um, if I win or not. Um, I see myself in a 50-50 position here. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. If not... We I saw it, didn't we? What was that? Um, was it a call-in? That one, Bravo won it, didn't he? Beat Oldham in the final. It was... It was, um, was it a call-in? Uh, battle, battle Hardened. Battle Hardened. Bravo. Yeah, he actually, uh, Bravo actually beat my uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, yeah. My friend was on all team in the final and lost. <laughs> ah, because we were saying like we were like, um, if you just open up, because it like the stream comes in like turn two or whatever. The first yeah. thing he does is like dominated, dominated spinal crush things like yeah. dominated crippling crush whatever it was first. I think boom, just yeah. keep that momentum going. 
And <laughs> there's only so many times he can block. Mm. It, it also depends on, on how strongly the old him respects the Bravo. If he doesn't respect the Bravo at all, he will just bring Titan's Fist. And then the game is way easier, since they don't pull up any pressure and they can just go in. But if they pull up with... Um, uh, Sledge. Sledge of, Eisen, Eisen, uh, of Eisenloft, it can be more difficult. No, it's Sledge of Eisenloft and uh, Stalagmite. Sledge of Eisenloft. <laughs> Sledge of Eisenloft, which would be a very sick card. It Just would imagine be. Sledge, Sledge of Envelheim with Frostbite on it. Would be great, right? Yeah. Oof, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Okay. Uh, next here would be Prism, which is not here anymore. No. Yeah. Nope. Luckily, because it would have been instant win. Not. Instant yeah. win for Bravo. Just instant win for Bravo. Uh, Reinar is another 50 50 matchup, but I also don't expect too many Reinars. No. And oh, then so. we're at Wizard Eye is like a third percent for me. Yeah, Wizard is a hard one, you really? said, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's the same as with Katsu. So many little damage triggers, um, I cannot mm. prevent all of them. Yeah. Some will leak through, and um, their fridge is insane strong. So they can block with only with their fridge. They can block out two crippling crosses before I can go through the, through the hit points. That's true. Um, yeah. It depends on the build. Um, I my win rate in my local meta got way better, um, more like sixty to seventy percent. But I also think um, it's because they're going too aggressively in and they don't really build up a, a fridge on, the, on their own to efficiently block me. So yeah. my attacks just go through. They go full in aggro. Um, yeah. So that's how I see my chances against all the matchups. Yeah. Um, I always think with Viserai, the problem is with Viserai is when I've always played him, I've always found myself in a position where I've got some momentum and I'm going and I'm going and I'm going. And then I'll just have a really rubbish turn where I won't really draw that big momentum and everything just goes to hell after that <laughs> uh, if that happens if that happens and i have a good turn after that and not just also a rubbish turn then it's mostly game for me then I, mostly i won yeah, yeah. but yeah. um it's it, i'm kind of dependent on that turn to happen otherwise I'm yeah. in trouble. and i think the consistency of the deck is pretty high if you're not going into greedy so those turns don't really happen Or not, not too often. Yeah, my local meta as well. That's why I win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's the this the main reason in my opinion. And my biggest hopes is that uh, or are that um, with my spinal crush and so on, I'm able to to stop Katsu long enough to fight to to not die. Too, yeah. too early because I, th I think if I'm facing off too many cards I'll just I'll not perform at all mm. yeah what do you, who do you think are... I'll go ahead I yeah, was going to say who do you think are going to be the um, sort of like the big four in terms of turnout hero wise um phew, good question um since in all the late, latest bigger tournaments, there was uh, a dash in the top eight, so I expect to face at least one dash. Uh, I think the biggest turnout will still be old him, since he mm. he's the best deck at the moment. I, I think we, there's no beating around the bush. He's the most efficient deck at the moment. I just really dislike playing him because I've seen what he did to our community. <laughs> because <laughs> so many people say, okay, I'll come play CC when Ultim is Living Legend. I, I'm not. I'm not interested in this shit. And Don't blame him. <laughs> really? Yeah, and I really can't blame them because the deck is very annoying to play against. So, yeah, I I don't want to be part of the problem. That's why I st stuck with uh, with Brawl and didn't learn Ultim too, too 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 much to play. Don't know anything uh, about that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I also expect Icelander still to be a lot to be around quite a lot but mm. not not like in the top in the, maybe not in the top 4 maybe top 5 or 6 people really? okay I mean since 
I, I think so many people are going to meta call yeah. now. So many Icelanders are play, were playing last uh, in the lot, lot, latest few tournaments. They weren't performing too well because of Azalea, and um, I think also Uzuri doesn't have too too much too bad of a matchup into her, since she can sort of switch out into a good one and, and pummel or something. Mm -hmm. um, so many people who were on Icelander are going back to going back to a more aggressive build. I expect many Briars to be there. First of all, it might be okay. the last, last tournament that you, that you can play Briar. In a we said of, that uh, last time, didn't we? We said that at bloody Worlds, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's, <laughs> She's still is, there. <laughs> She's still, still there. Chugging she, along. She, she, yeah. was, she was very bad into the, into the, into the uh, 2013 Ice Winter. Mm. Uh, right. So now that the Ice Heroes got a little bit sideboard cards to use against Azalea and Co. And Co. Uh, I think the Agro Heroes can prevail easier against those Ice Heroes. That's why I think Briar will have a, quite a big turn up. Cool. She, I like that idea. Since she, yeah, since she is not that bad into Azalea, even though you, if you strip away one or two cards from her on a Mount Heroic turn, she can still beat you for 20. Yeah, it's pretty vile. Yeah. And uh, I that's think that's all. Yeah, I hate her just because of. I, I think the weapon is just bullshit. <laughs> well, if we look at if we look at this this article quickly here, because obviously this is the probably another snapshot before the Pro Tour, which which sort of backs up your your sort of perceptions. There is uh, players were greeted uh, by a wall of ice with Lexi and Oldin being the second and third most represented decks. Uh, so Lexi and Oldin, the most. Um, you know, obviously that's that's the that's the ice heroes, isn't it? You got Lexi being yeah. icy on hits, mm -hmm. and Oldim just also doing the same sort of thing. And um, this is halted aggressive decks like Fi, with only one brave player repping the Draconic Ninja. So only one Fi player. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it could be an icy an icy thing again by the look by the looks of it. Um, with Lexi and Oldim being good choices. Cue the Game of Thrones music. Winter is yeah. coming. <laughs> yeah. Bah. And uh, the thing is, Lexi is not a nice hero in the sense of Iceland or Oldham, no. since she has the own hits and the aggression still. Yeah, so... Well, like, like that's, that, that, that's the thing, right? I think the sort of uh, aggro matchups have now shifted to Rangers because they, have, they can have sort of go wide and go tall but also on hits and disruption rather than just raw damage which is also effect, yeah. uh, which is which is shifting everything else around yeah um, so and they're sort why... of, they're sort of taking the place of the standard aggro lists i think like briar yeah, and, and they Fife. have they have the better chance into these full block version of the control heroes yeah so well, i have a better matchup into those heroes than into the full aggressive ones yeah, so, oh, that's right. So I, so that's why I also expect a lot of Bravos. But I don't think he's going to be top four. I think top four will be, uh, of course, Old Him and Icelander. Uh, not Icelander, Old Him and Lexi. Um, I, I, I will give a call and say, okay, many people will go full pump uh, Briar, since she will prevail against those, uh, those okay. um, Rangers and also can overrun an old him because she needs the same strategy with both. So her whole arsenal is going to be against the top heroes. And for the fourth one, um, I think the fourth one would be a wild guess. I, I can say, okay, it's 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 might be Icelander since she's a choice. She was she was a mm. choice um, for quite a long time. But the thing is, she has a very very bad matchup into those two rangers, and I think that's going to hold her back. Many people are not wrapping Icelander because of that. Yeah. Uh, well, it is what I expect. Mm. And uh, that okay. might bring in um, Dash or Katsu as the fourth yeah. most played. So obviously in, or, in the, la in the or last... Or Briar. Yeah. Or Briar. I, or Briar. I, I think it might be Briar because, because Briar can still do very much with a, with, with a, with a very little hand. Um, yeah. Katsu not so much. If Katsu gets too many um, Frostbites, he's going to skip a turn. Yeah. Um, Bri won't do that if you build her right. And the thing is, if you build her right, she's going to have a lot of pump spells in her. And yeah. Slam prevents pump spells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Back on Chokeslam. Yeah. It always comes back to the Chokeslam. 
It does. Yeah, Martin would be uh, would be so proud of us. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, um, uh, but yeah, yeah. So I think Oldim's going to be up there. Obviously, that was the last event. It was a mirror match, Oldim. Uh, in the in the yeah. final, um, so Oldham's going to be Oldham's obviously going to be there. Azalea, I think, is going to be there in droves as well. Um, Dromai Azuri also made this top eight in the last one, so Azuri's also mm. doing stuff consistently as well. I don't know how or why she's doing stuff consistently, uh, but she seems to be there as well at the moment consistently. In do you top think eight. Azalea randomly? Do you think Azalea will be there in 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 high numbers? Yeah, I think yeah, so. But I don't think that hmm. she will be top four. I think no. she will be in the... Uh, I think if, between 5 or 10% of our participants will be running No, it's going to be... Yeah. Or quite a little bit lower even then, even than that. Oldham's just, think, Oldham's think, just too good, really, into into yeah. Azalea. There's going to be a lot of Oldham's. There's not, there's not too many Azalea's going to get through, I don't yeah. think. Because I think yeah. it showed, didn't it, what I was saying sort of last time, that people were just vastly unprepared for the new cards they just thought ah it's azalea and they just yeah. they didn't yeah. they didn't pay attention to the fact that she's just got a new set yeah but now people are like she's had a new set we need to plan for it i've noticed the price of red unmovable has gone up mm. and 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 now and then what there was one it was the same brody again wasn't it in the top eight and then yeah. he just got knocked straight out mm. <laughs> so it's like well there you go i guess yeah. um which is kind of what i predicted last time we spoke I was like, well, as soon as as soon as someone like an old him, someone who's playing old him, or someone who's playing anyone who is going in into that sort of level of competition, and is going to go, well, this is actually a big problem now. So I need to make sure I'm not yeah. fall into that again, like I did last time or whatever. And unfortunately, yeah. So the old him mirror to me was hilarious at the end. So I was like, I saw that coming a mile off as soon as I saw those two oldings in the top eight, and they were at opposite ends of the um, the seeding. Um, and then they they even had to push it to the next day, didn't they? They didn't they didn't have the final on the same day. They had they made them play the next day because the yeah. venue kicked them out. Oh, that's brilliant! Oh, there's two oldings in the top eight. Let's do an extra day. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have, we're gonna have to go to day two, lads, because this game is gonna be like. A nightmare. Oh. I, bet, I bet they could have done a six-hour stream just for that one game. Probably could have done, yeah. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, and that's also why I won't play Oldham. Uh, my brain is just not not capable of playing that along without a break. Mm. I mean, yeah. they're still playing now. You know what I mean? It's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I think um, Bravo and the Sailor will have like the same or more or more or less the same people playing them. Okay. Yeah. And fun thing, we're going to have a Bravo dinner on Friday. You're gonna have a what? <laughs> a Bravo dinner. Oh, that's brilliant. Nice. All the people that that, that uh, most people or some people that play Bravo at the Pro Tour are going to have dinner together. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> what? Yeah, someone on Twitter asked me, "Hey, yo, I'm going to do. We're, going, we're planning a Bravo dinner. Are you in?" I was like, what well, is the problem? Then? Yeah, on Friday, we'll just all Bravo players from Pro Tour will come together and eat. I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, it. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it, I'm in. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Take, take my money. Take my money. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Do you know where you're eating? Um, I mean, it, won't, I think... it won't make a difference to me. I don't know anything about Baltimore, but. <laughs> I have no idea. I'll just. Probably something that's shitty. I mean, it's got, it's no, it's got to be like a, it's got to be like a, a, a grand banquet hall with feasts and yeah, but like big I mean, steins of, of ale. And... Oh yeah. I mean, I can We need to ask Fluke where to eat though, because he always has those nice restaurants. But oh god, yeah, that Brazilian restaurant we went to was crazy, wasn't it? Fuck you, know, yeah. Remember that? I, I still don't know how much a meal costs there. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, he just he does that all the time, doesn't he? He did, he did it in um, Lille as well, didn't he? We went to have pizza, it's him, didn't we? It's so annoying. He's such a generous man. <laughs> <laughs> Take my money, Fluke, for fuck's sake. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'd say we can also talk about the deck I'll be bringing. I mean, it's it's a pretty basic list. We can go through pretty. Yeah, quickly. yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Uh, so now there'll be. Yeah, this this will be full screen now on the um, on the video, so people can see. But of course, there it is, Bravo in all of his cold foil extended glory. <laughs> yeah, should I record it on my side? I think that will be a. It's, bit of a it's not Bravo, well spectacular. 
Yeah. Oh, it's our show stopper. It yeah, do you, wanna, do you wanna do you wanna press record on your side and then just send me the file and I can just work with um, whatever works. I just started uh, recording and uh, I'm also recording our voices so you can just align it pretty easily. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll be bringing a pretty uh, pretty standard loadout for most matchups, which is uh, like Going this. Fancy. Yeah. I was thinking that bloody show off. Say you're a show off without saying you're a show off. It's show stopper, <laughs> not show off. <laughs> el, el spectacular. El spectacular. Yeah. The thing is, I'm I'm thinking about using my non-foil versions of the equipment just to have an easier way to carry them around, since yeah. this box is going to be too much. And yeah, uh, yeah I don't want to to lose this on. How is how is the box that can fit? half a stock of an Asda in it. Not enough to carry that. It is enough, <laughs> but I want to use a smaller box. I want to use only this. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you fit them in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nah. And well, that my... big fancy box is, and you're taking a Ultimate Gar Sidewinder. Yeah. <laughs> and this one will be for the for the match, uh, matchups. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, for the uh, for the Runeblade matchups, I'll just use Malden boots. Yeah, that's Makes that's sense. the plan so far. Uh, I'm not not thinking about changing too much on the equipment side. I definitely won't be using the um, Captain Bravo since no. <laughs> I think it's it's good. It's fun, but it's it's bad in so many matchups and. Titan Spitz just doesn't cut it. It's just a bad card. No. Compared to Amethyst. Uh, three E Strikes for the Domai matchup. Three Seller Speltings, which will be foiled up right after the episode since um, <laughs> <laughs> I just got them from Poland. Oh. It was Poland or something like that. As Something that's normally not really known for fast shipment, but I got it in two days. I don't know how. Oh, tell me about it. I ordered my last copy of Leave No Witnesses from um, a seller from Poland, and they arrived just it. Well, it arrived yesterday. It was shipped on the sixth. So Both we're recording this on the twentieth. Yeah. So it took f yeah. two weeks <laughs> to get it. I ordered priority those. mail. I ordered those on the fourteenth, and they arrived yesterday. Wow. So yeah. still nearly a week, isn't it? I mean... Yeah, but it's a week for shipping, including uh, arriving and sending it and everything. That's Normally it takes two to three weeks if you order from outside Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. For me. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I ordered a few, uh, two cards uh, from the One Piece TCG from the UK. I ordered them on the 6th. They're still not here. They were oh, really? sent out on the 6th and they're still not here. But I, they they have tracking, so I can track it. I know they're moving, but it takes yeah. a bit of time. Um, of course, Command and Conquer into close to every matchup. Of course. Joke Slam. I'm running two erase faces. Those are I'm thinking about either cutting two erase faces or one Salus and one E Strike for Amnesia. I'm not sure about that. I'm still thinking about that. Uh, three Sings is like a must play. Three uh, Staunches, two Oasis thinking about um, Steadfast and two copies of Pulverize. And yes, I will be running all the, the, the bling bling. And if it gives me <laughs> some trouble, so be it. Um, like I already displayed, they're being held very tight, so there's no bending. Mm. I will re-sleeve them since the sleeves are a little rough on, around the yeah. edges. Yeah. Um, if the deck's always... full will, it shouldn't be such an issue. I think the main issue they had was that there were people who were just using like a couple of foils in their decks, and they were blatantly obvious. Where yeah. if you really got if the full the full thing is basically all foil, then there shouldn't really be an issue because if there's going to be like Pringling, they're all going to be Pringling. Yeah. The thing is, there's still different print runs, and some print runs Pringle more than others. So it can still be an issue, uh, but I'm like, well, I'm not going to buy the whole deck again in non-foil. I'm just going to run this in, in full foil and buy every other deck in non-foil since I don't want to have uh, those problems 
if possible. Yeah. But I have to say, yeah. they don't look any pringled. Um, they don't look anything no, like... Look good. Um, good. So I'm not expecting problems. But if there are problems because of that, so be it. <laughs> but I'm taking the risk. Um, oh, I still sideboarded against uh, as earlier, it seems. Since the, the spicy panels, yellow yeah. pummel. The yellow pummel. <laughs> I'm not sure if it stays in, but uh, it did win me so many games. I, I, I need to... to Let's lose, keep uh, a spicy yellow pummel. Yeah. Uh, of course, the, in my opinion, the best um, aggro, the best cards to actually attack... Yeah, I, I, I forgot to put out this. Um, Are you playing that? But I, try, I was trying it. It was bad. And I forgot to take it out. <laughs> Doesn't Since block. Like three weeks now. Doesn't block, therefore bad. <laughs> yeah, that's the main issue with it. If you have it on your on your final hand and you don't want to die and you have it in your hand and you, you need to block three more, you just die. just die. I'll definitely bring in um, the other Heath card as a one-off for this. Thunderquake. Um, Thunderquake, yeah. Mm. Uh, one-off Thunderquake, since it's just a text for eight. Uh, Rouse the Ancients is great, since uh, we can actually use it more efficient than uh, ult him. With yeah. something like that. And it is also very good against ult him. Macho Grande wins you games. Buckle is a very underrated card, in my opinion. I'm just running two, though, since uh, three is too much. I need those yeah. bumpers. <laughs> uh, and I also think about cutting it and playing a whole set of Thunderquake, since... Uh, the Roma is the only matchup I can use it efficiently since Fi is away, and I'm not expecting too many uh, too many Viserai rune blades, and the equipments of the Briars isn't that big of a bother like it is with um, Viserai. Viserai can mm. head start their turn with a Ether Iron Weave and just kill you in one turn basically but i think i'll still leave it in because it is also not that bad against neither iron reef in um in briar but mostly briar uses uh tunic these days and um terra sander is also very good to disrupt rippling crush and spinal crush of course those are the two best crushes and pommel the red pommel is a must of course. uh i also play blue staunches uh play set off um, Buckling Blow plays it off for to six damage. Cranial Crush for the eight damage. Disable yeah. for the damage. For these are basically just just poppers mm. at this point. Um, three copies of Imposing Visage to make those sick turns where I just take out a Showtime, another blue, and swing with the hammer. Next turn I have five card hand, or yeah. I prepare a very safe um, Crippling Crush depending on the on the match matchup. Uh, Pummel for discard. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. That's nice. uh, what yeah. I do. It's not that big. There's not so much spice going on in the Bravo community at the moment since the deck is pretty much solved. What do you think? A hum is it Humble blanks their ability? Humble? Is it Humble? From um, Outsiders. It is, yeah, I think so. Ah, the Chief. one that the, yeah, if it hits, uh, it deactivates the ability. Uh, it's mm. not, it's not a big, big enough threat, and it just um, costs two. If it would cost three, there's a possibility that mm. I would want it. What well, just you uh, said about swapping out a race face for amnesia? That's one thing I'm thinking about. Yes. Mm. <laughs> mm. But as so I say, I would, would humble come into the, the conversation there because amnesia obviously only makes you forget a card name makes you forget card names but them being able them not having an ability yeah but uh, um, humble blocks two amnesia blocks three does it well i'm amnesia, gonna start amnesia blocks three amnesia i'm blocks gonna three. throw a spanner in the ring and say crush confidence then lads <laughs> it would be the better call than humble actually yeah because yeah. it blocks for three it blocks for three but it costs you can dominate it you can dominate it and it also costs two, since you always have a seismic search token. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> tectonic player, we don't miss that tectonic trigger. No. <laughs> two that triggers miss all the time, not tectonic trigger. 
That's one thing I just. That's, yeah, that's one thing I never. I just never get my head around. Is like, oh, this always costs one less because you have a bloody tectonic. Mostly, <laughs> mostly one most less. of the time. But the thing is, if you always calculate minus one when you look look at the card and you for, you don't have a seismic search token, it's going to be very embarrassing if you could just cast uh, a choke slam with a with a blue. Crippling for six. Yeah. <laughs> How do you pay that? Well, with my seismic search, you don't have one. Oh. <laughs> Well, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, but yeah, so uh, so that's right. Obviously, Pro Tour is right around the corner. So this time next week, when this uh, when this is out, um, you will be there, loving life. Yeah. Um, so uh, any, any sort of plans to just have a bit of fun while you're there at all, or any? I know you said you about the, I said about the Bravo dinner, but anything else you got going on at all? I mean, uh, me and the tall Timmy, uh, Paul, will yeah. be arriving at the same day and we already written that we will meet up on 25th or 26th to uh, visit uh, Washington for a bit. Oh, nice. I will definitely um, play some games on the evenings. Um, I'm trying to also put in one or two more drafts before Pro Tour. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but we will see. I would love to see some uh, to like the, the White House or the Obelisk, but I'm not sure if I have the time to, to visit those. I, I would really love to to visit two or three main attractions of uh, Washington while I'm there, though. And if everything breaks down and I do a very, very, very bad uh, day one, so I don't make it to day two. Um, I might also go to New York and have a look around there, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you should. Um, you should also give Jim a shout. Obviously, he's from Washington area. Fab, she, she can't. Yeah, Jim. yeah. Um, I asked him if he was going there, so, and he was there. Yeah, I'm going there. Um, yeah, I sh definitely should write him before I before I'm there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So maybe he can just tag along with the uh, with. As a as a tour guide. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I think um, I think also got the Goblin Reserve crew are staying with Jim, so they'll also be they'll also be with Jim as well. So you might be able to hang around with them also. No, okay. Uh, Aston, we can just do the ultimate pit fight thing without you then. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> we'll just record it and send uh, the file to you. Yeah. Ready to participate. <laughs> yeah. Cheers then. Um, but that's, that's a good way to close it off, actually, yeah, because um, by the time you're seeing this, the Ultimate Pit Night sort of uh, series would have started, um, and everybody on, on this show will appear on there at some stage. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, we've got that in the pipeline. That's always good. It's a, bit, a big series that, uh, that I've planned to do for a while, and it's taken a long time to do, so definitely go and check it out when you can. Um, but, um, but, yeah, Pro Tour Baltimore right around the corner. Bravo is going to be represented by Pascal, which is going to be good. Yeah. Good to see how it goes. Um, and you'll have to keep us updated. Maybe give us a little uh, nice little video call or something while you're there. <laughs> well, I think I can, I can handle something out, yeah. Yeah. It should, um, should be possible. You're doing vlogs again? Call. You can do vlogs? Uh, I'll, have, I'll have a look. Uh, I'll, I'll pack everything with me just in case, but I'm not traveling alone this time, so maybe That's not true. too much. Yeah. Maybe just uh, a few snippets of uh, of, this, of the main attractions without too much talking. So yeah, I I'll have a look. Uh, I think I will. I'll record some small things, but I won't record the whole thing like last time. Yeah, that's fair enough. Nice, cool. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah that's and pretty much let's not forget to shout out your uh, Discord channel where the Bravo Bros is. Uh, was I'll, I'll just, I'll just leave that to you now. You, you just you just you just do it every time. I was just expect you to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, then. Uh, yeah, don't forget to go to Ezra's uh, Discord channel. Uh, of course, is it the right way around? I can do it like this, mm. so you can ch ch choose either way. Yeah. Um, well, no, you're normally on the bottom. It's me and me and Tom normally on the top. You're on the bottom. As is this version? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me and, and Tom are always uh, on top, baby. Way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ding ding. Yeah. Ding ding. Yeah. And there you can find the Bravo Bros discussion about Bravo and so on, and yeah. also Azalea, of course, since it's mm. as. But I find it funny how yeah. they how they gave me a Nerves of Steel playmat. 
for the content creation content creator kit. Nerves of steel? What? They, they gave me a nerves of steel play mat. <laughs> I'm like, what? Three. What's going on? Maybe they're like, oh, he's switching to Bravo now. Let's just give him this instead. <laughs> give him a Guardian one. Yeah, give him a Guardian Great. one. Great. Great. I just thought yeah. it was quite funny. I, um, I, st I still didn't sign up for the content creation thing in uh, on Flesh, Flesh and Blood uh, Fab TCG website. No, yeah, not yet. Yeah, well. Uh... Uh, I, I mean, I didn't even fill out the form. I, maybe I should do that one time. Yeah. All depends what you want to get out of it. Um, but yeah, speaking of which, speaking of content creation, there is we all do have uh, little things that we do. Um, so uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll start with you, Pascal. Where can people find you? Well, most of the time I'm active on as a Discord channel, like I've always already said, <laughs> and on also on Twitter at Soccerworm. Mm. And I also started doing some Bravo videos, uh, matchup guides on the D React channel. Which uh, will be linked, as always. Yeah, it will be, yeah. I recently uploaded Azalea, which was like the most efficient video I ever did. Yeah, good <laughs> it's, stuff. It's, I mean, it, it, it's for for 40 subscri subscribers in one week to have more than, 100, uh, more than 90 views is pretty decent. It is, yeah. It's cool. very good. Yeah. And uh, the next will be Viserai, which... Hopefully, I'll be able to do before I go to Baltimore. And since I'm going to Baltimore, it will be difficult to do the Icelander and Old Him before the Pro Tour. Mm. But I think I'll get so much more experience at the Pro Tour to be able to do a better video about that after the Pro Tour. Yeah, and we kind of we kind of touched on we kind of touched on the videos that you haven't done in this discussion today to a certain degree. Um, yeah. If you want more more sort of insights into Azalea. Draw my. Uh, what else did you do on your channel? Uh, I did Phi, Draw my, and Desalia, which yeah. were like, uh, yeah. I, I mean, Phi was like one of the harder matchups before, since he could use Kodachi. Yeah. Uh, Mr. I would be the one I really want to push out before, since I think Phi, the, 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 the hints I gave in the Phi video can be used one to one for Katsu, more or less. Yeah. And if Wizard Eye is out, I can, I, I know, okay, I give everything that they need for the hardest matchups and then just Icelander and ult him as the not, still unfavored, but not too hard matchups yeah. um, are going to follow right after the Pro Tour. Yeah. Can, before we go on to Tom's, uh, Tom's stuff, can ult him living legend after Baltimore? He can't, can he? He's not there yet, is he? He's not there yet, I think. No. Okay. No. But well, Briar could. But Briar could, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, 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 yeah. So hopefully, yeah, we'll see. But um, but yeah, Oldham and uh, Icelander, expect those uh, those deck techs on your channel afterwards when you've got more more experience. That's fair fair enough. Well, yeah. well left till after that. Uh, but yeah, big boss. Where can people find you? Oh, just for going to that, I'm going to say if anybody wants to hear more of Pascal's insights mm. into Bravo, you can hear them on a podcast called The Big Boss Book Club, That's which segue. is available in the Maybe. in the uh, the text box below. It is, yeah. If you want to uh, click into it. You can follow me though at uh, Big Boss 010 on Twitter, um, Big Boss Book Club um, Instagram, Facebook, and of course it's still there. Hive social. <laughs> He's still checking it. <laughs> Just keep checking it. Pass. I got the other day. I looked at my phone. And it was like, oh, I've got a notification from Hive Social. It's Pascal's like one of my posts. I was like, hey, yeah, he's still <laughs> there. <laughs> still there. He's just letting me know. He knows. Still there. He's checking as well. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's it. We did. We nice. did two people that are still active on on Hive. I think. Yeah. It's just it's just me and you, mate. Literally, the yeah. feed is just me and you posting. But yeah, like. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Big Boss Book Club's podcast comes out uh, Monday 9am UK time on all uh, reasonably, moderately adequate podcast platforms. Fantastic. I might, uh, I might try and um, I might post a, like a video of me sat on the toilet on Hive, see if it gets any interactions. <laughs> Again? <laughs> Just me and Pascal giving it a like. That'd yeah. Be it. I reckon we should all do it, see what happens. Uh, <laughs> on the can. Yeah. Just sat on the toilet. Um, Having a word over time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, excuse yeah. me. Anyway. Potential. Yeah. 
we are in the Arsenal step right now. Uh, as living legends, we would say that. Uh, but, um, yeah, thanks very much for tuning in. The Bravo Bros. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, do it all again uh, probably next week or week after. We'll see. Because, uh, obviously, Pascal's going to be away. Uh, so it might be, a, might be a week off. But it's every two weeks anyway, isn't it? So we'll see how it... Uh, how it turns out but I mean, yeah i mean we can still we can still have a very short talk about yeah. how things in baltimore are i mean if i send you the video you can still cut something together and throw yeah it sounds out. good yeah yeah do that then just do bravo bros pascal pascal version pascal's update but on bravo <laughs> bros <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah stay tuned we'll see what happens cheers folks cheers